parents and students, it's Mrs. Lambert. I'm here to help you today with some math that we've been doing here in second grade. We've been adding two digit numbers and we've been using some strategies to help us do that. The first one that we've started with is breaking apart ones to add. For example, if I had 37 plus four, we're gonna go back to our tens and ones. For 37, I'm gonna need three tens. 10, 20, 30. And then for my seven, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven ones, that gives me 37. And then for my four, I just need four ones. Now, to add these, the easiest part, the easiest way to do it is to make a 10 with our ones. To do that, we're gonna take the ones from the side that has the least, and we're gonna move them over to the side that has the most and make that a 10. So if I have seven ones, I know that I need three more ones to get to 10. So I'm gonna group these together. Now I need to remember that this is a 10. This is where a lot of students have been having a hard time. When they're going back and counting, they're only counting 10, 20, 30, one, and they're putting their answer as 31. But if we look at that, that wouldn't make sense anyway because our first number is 37. So we need to remember to count 10, 20, 30, this is gonna be 40, and that's one. So that quickly gives us our answer of 41. Another example, 28, 24 plus eight. Again, I have two tens for 20, I have four ones for my four, and then I have eight ones over here. I'm gonna do the same thing, even though it's on the other side this time, I'm gonna still take from the side that has the least, the side, and I'm gonna move it to the side that has the most over here. So if I have eight ones, I need two more. It doesn't have to look pretty, it doesn't matter how you do it, whatever way you can circle them to know that that is now a 10. So I'm gonna count again, 10, 20, this is gonna be 30, and I have two left. So my answer is 32. Then we can have tens on both sides. Again, 42 plus 28. 10, 20, 30, 40, one, two is 42. 10, 20, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, that's 28. So to add, I'm gonna take from the side that has the least, and I'm gonna move them to the side that has the most. This time we have some tens in a way, so we can get creative as long as we know we've made a 10. So I know I have eight here. I need both of these over here. I'm gonna circle them. I can come around like this and make a 10, but you don't have to do that either. You can circle these and draw an arrow to know you're moving those over there whatever way that helps you know that this is now one, that's a 10, it's one thing. So we're gonna count 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, and then we have that, that's gonna be 70. So 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70. Next, we've been breaking apart add-ins as tens and ones, or also like we did last unit with expanded form. It looks like this. They have 25, 45, plus 24. We're gonna break that up over here into expanded form, which is gonna make the adding a lot easier. It looks like more work, but it really makes it easier in the end. So if I have 45, I'm gonna take my tens, which is 40, and then plus my ones, which is five. For 24, the value of the two in the 10 spot is 20. The value of my four in the one spot is four. So I have 20 plus four. Now I'm going to add these together. Five plus four is nine. And then there's two ways you can do this. They can line it up and know zero plus zero is zero. And then four plus two is six. For some students, it's easier for them to just count on by tens. They start at 40 and then they go 50, 60, and then they know it's 60. Whatever is easiest, as long as they're using this form. So easily I can see right now that 60 plus nine is gonna 
give me an answer of 69. This bubble we're going to talk about on the next slide. Right now, 69. Next one, 57 plus 37. Same thing, we're going to break this apart into tens and ones. The value of my 5 is 50 because it's in the tens place. The value of my 7 is 7. 37, the value of my 3 in the tens place is 30 plus 7 ones. 7 plus 7 is 14. 50 plus 30 is 80. Now here's where the bubble comes in. I have a 10 in here. 14 has a 10. So I'm going to come over here and get that out. 80 plus 14. I know in 14, I have 10 plus 4. So now I need to do 80 plus 10 is 90 plus 4 for an answer of 94. Last one. We're going to do the same way. We're going to look at our tens and ones and we're going to break it apart. The value of my 2 is 20 because it's in the tens place. The value of my 4 is still 4 because it's in the ones place. On the bottom, the value of my first 7 is 70 because it's in the tens place. And the value of my second 7 is going to be 7 because it's in the ones place. 4 plus 7, 11. And then 20 plus 70, Now with the last one, I can see that I have a 10 in here, so I want to take that out. So I have 90 plus 11. In my 11, I have 110 and 11. So if I do the 90 plus the 10, that gives me 100 plus 1, and my answer is 101. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps. I know this concept can be a little hard for students and parents to get because it looks like a lot more work. But in the end, when students can understand how to break numbers apart this way, it really helps them with mental math and with math that's com coming to them in the future. Thanks for watching. Let me know if you have any questions. Good luck.